Welcome back to Mr. Kennedy's Virtual Lessons. We are on week one, lesson number two, and we got our target down here. I can add mixed numbers using common denominators. Now yesterday we worked on using finding the quick common denominator in order to make equivalent fractions, and we will use that skill today. But let's look into here where we have a mixed number, which was actually the answer to yesterday's link. And the mixed number is simply this, a whole number plus a fraction. Not too difficult to understand, right? Whole number, fraction, it's a mix of two different types of numbers. So let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing we're going to look at is adding a mixed number with common denominators. Now as you can see here, we have 3 and 1 fourth plus 2 and 3 fourths. If you look at our fractions, they have common denominators, 4 and 4. Very simple work, boys and girls. Take the second fraction, line it underneath, makes everything easier for you. And you just simply take 3 plus 2, your whole numbers, all you got to do is just add them straight up. 3 plus 2 is 5. Very basic for you. And then we look at the second one. We have our fractions, 1 fourth and 3 fourths. Now, as you know, when you add fractions, they have to have common denominators. Since there's a 4 here, all we got to do is take 3 plus 1, since they're common, and it gives us 4. And it gives us 4 fourths as the fraction. Now notice, I didn't add 4 plus 4. The denominator stayed the same. Now, something else you should notice when looking at this, you see 5 and 4 fourths. And if you're thinking just like I am, and I know you are, you will know that 4 fourths is a whole. Very simple. So four, 5 and 4 fourths, when we take it, 5 plus that whole makes your final answer 6. Very simple process. I don't think you're going to have any problems with that. But now we're going to move into the little bit harder content. Adding mixed numbers with unlike denominators. So we have here 7 and 1 half and 3 and 2 thirds. We're going to start off exactly the same. I'm going to move them right below to make everything easier for us to look at. And we're going to go ahead and add our whole numbers. There's no reason not to. And that gives us 10. But look at our fractions. A denominator 2 and a denominator 3. So what do you think we do? Well, if you're thinking we find the quick common denominator, you're right. That's what we did yesterday. That was in yesterday's lesson. We're going to do the same thing. So we're going to look at quick common denominators here. And then you remember, to find the quick common denominator, you take the denominator of both your fractions and multiply them together. In this case, we have 2 and 3. So 2 times 3 equals 6. Now that we know what 6 is, the next step was to replace the first fraction. Well, we know the denominator is going to be 6. We just found that out. That's our common denominator. And we look, what did we multiply 2 by to get the 6? Well, we multiplied it by 3. So now you're going to also do the same to the 1 and multiply 1 times 3, which equals 3. Very simple. Then the next step was to replace your fraction down here, your second fraction, 2 thirds. Well, we know the denominator, once again, is going to be 6, just like above. The denominator once is common. And we did 3 times what to 6? Well, 3 times 2. So you're also going to take 2 times 2, which equals 4. So now we have two new fractions. Now what do we do with these two new fractions? Well, we're going to replace the old ones. We don't need this 1 half anymore. 1 half is being replaced with 3 6. And 2 thirds is being replaced with 4 6. Very simple. Now you can add them. Common denominator of 6 and 6. We know that 4 plus 3 is 7. So our new fraction is 7 6. But are we done? No we, are, no, we aren't. We are not. Sorry. We are 10 and 7 6. What does that give us? 7 6 is greater than one whole. And it's one whole with one leftover. So add that one whole to your 10. And you get 11. Very basic. And what does it see? One leftover out of 6. And now... You have added mixed numbers with unlike denominators. Very simple process. Relaunch the video if you need to and it explains it. There's not much more to it. Now, we're not done. It's time for that link. So it's time to get started with the math link. And just a reminder, put your answer in the comments on what the math link is or bring it to me if you're in my classroom the next day. And we'll go over it and we'll look at who's got the answers and we'll give you some kind of notice acknowledgement for getting it so let's get started on this math link and today's math link 
Provide me with one real world experience in which we would use adding or subtracting of mixed numbers. So a real world experience, try saying that five times fast, in which we would use adding or subtracting of mixed numbers. Now, this is an easy question to answer, but if you're watching this video, it means you're on the internet most likely. So take a moment, do some research. When are mixed numbers used in the real world? Where is it used? Find out, answer in the comments below, or bring that into class tomorrow, and we'll be prepared to go over it. So thank you for joining me today. We are in lesson two. We're gonna have a good time, and we're gonna continue to do this each day, and hopefully maintain the process. So, have a good day.